Wellness for Life is brought to you by Purim Physical Therapy, Sanford Health Clinic and Same Day Surgery Center, Amy Lundberg, Fitness for the Soul, Gottenborg Chiropractic Clinic, Pelican Drug Health Mart, Mojave Ottawa Community Action Partnership. Hi, this is Amy Lundberg with Fitness for the Soul Television, and I am so excited to bring you the second segment of our Thyroid Talk. And the Thyroid Talk is to hopefully give you some support, solutions, and strategies to help your thyroid get even better. And if you have thyroid symptoms, but all the tests come out normal and you're like, no, my thyroid's just fine, but you still got these nagging symptoms, I'm hoping that maybe what I'm gonna share with you today might give you a little bit more insight. Last segment, and if you didn't catch it, it's on YouTube, so go to YouTube. I talk about the eight different thyroid pattern dysfunctions that could be going on with your thyroid. The second one that I wanna talk about is the autoimmune hypothyroidism, and this one is called Hashimoto's. And what it is is this type of hypothyroidism produces antibodies to the th thyroid tissue, which causes the immune system to attack and destroy your thyroid which over time causes a decline in thyroid hormone levels. So it's very gradual. And I have to say, many of my clients have either told me they've gone to three to five different doctors um, to find that diagnosis, or I will ask them to take, um, take the thyroid antibodies test. I will ask them if they would mind asking their doctor to offer this. And I really, doctors are willing to do this if you ask. And they will see that and then you can see if they're elevated and that may be a sign that you might have Hashimoto's thyroidism. And that is just, just to have a diagnosis is relieving and then you can see what would be the best medications for the doctor and you decide what would be best for you. But beyond the medications, there's other things you can do. However, one of some of the causes of Hashimoto's is a leaky gut. This is like just, if you're on the SAD diet, the American, standard American diet, you might have leaky gut. Heavy metals also, if you just had a mouthful of heavy metal in your body since your childhood, that might be a cause. Food allergies, gluten and dairy, stress huge. Most of the doctors will make recommendations to come see me as a health coach just so I can help people with their stress because if you can decrease your stress, it makes a big difference on helping you with the Hashimoto's and you feeling better. So one of my um, strengths as a health coach is helping people with their stress. There's tons of things we do and it's night and day in four months what we, I work with with my clients, how they feel from the, the beginning to where they are when we are completed. Insulin resistance is hidden. If you can, um, this one is key. I'd say many of my clients have insulin resistance and don't even know. I sent out an email blast where you can, you can just through a questionnaire assessment, see if you have insulin resistance where you are. And I had so many emails coming back to me going, I had no idea. My insulin levels always showed normal. And I'm like, yeah, that was the fasting glucose test. You never actually had the insulin fasting test. So an insulin fasting test will give you a little bit um, more of an indication. And if you have tri high, high triglycerides, that might also be an indicator, possible insulin resistance. Pregnancy, infection, and trauma. So that anything with autoimmune almost can always be related to trauma, um, almost. In, so I always look at the trauma, the stress, the insulin resistance, and the leaky gut. Those, oh, and gluten, dairy, everyone. I work with that on everybody. That's such a factor in all health issues. Um, but the most common lab findings, so look at your labs. Grab them out. You know, put, if you've got a DVR, put pause on it. But go ahead and see where your TSH, your TSH might show normal. And that's what the doctor may have just did, was just check your TSH. And it's normal, so then you don't have any thyroid problems. But also check your T4, because it might be low, and then have, check your antibodies to see if um, they're elevated, because that's key. In Hashimoto's, this is usually elevated, and this is low, but your TSH is normal. So you might want to go ahead and take a look. Now, ways to support, balance your blood sugars. You will not heal your Hashimoto's unless those blood sugars are balanced and your adrenals are supported, and you have proper nutrients leaky gut, all of this. But I have to say, you know, I have people, um, 
through the conferences I see and everything, actually heal their Hashimoto's. So don't think of it as a lifelong thing. It possibly may not have to be. If you're willing to work on everything, all systems in the body that help support the thyroid. So I'm, I want to give you hope. It's not always the case, but it can be, especially when you work on the stress. Huge factor in, in the insulin resistance. So this is Amy Lundberg. I hope you got something out of this. And take put pause, write this down of what you can eat and what to add into your diet so you can um, get further support. So I put the next slide in. I don't have time to go over it, but put it on pause, write it all out, and start incorporating this into your diet. Food before supplements, take care. And also, if you have questions on this, a complimentary discovery session is always available to you. More than happy to just see where you need to work on, which direction and strategies you need specifically for your health to get you better, because you can. I'm here for you, take advantage of it. Bye-bye. up on Wellness for Life. Hello, I'm Matt Koffenberg, physical therapist and owner of Perm Physical Therapy. Today we're going to talk about cervicogenic headaches. Those are headaches that are specifically caused by a neck dysfunction, something going on in the neck that is creating pain in the head. Um, cervicogenic headaches do account for 15 to 20 percent of all headaches. They are slightly different than migraines. A cervicogenic headache uh, will be very intense in pain throughout the entire day. A migraine will often start at a low intensity and gradually build itself up. A cervicogenic headache will have a presentation in which neck movements create it or sustained postures will create it. Uh, the other thing that's fairly consistent with a cervicogenic headache is the location of the pain. Oftentimes the pain will start at the base of the skull, so it'll often start back in this area and it'll wrap around the head, so it'll come up over the head. A lot of times it's one-sided, and a lot of times it'll end right behind the base of the eye. So a lot of people will say, man, I've got this headache in my eye. A lot of times those are considered neck headaches or cervicogenic headaches. Um, the source of the pain with a cervicogenic headache is called the facet joint. So what is a facet joint? A facet joint is where movements in the spine occur. So this is our spine. This is basically the base of the skull, and we're looking at somebody from behind. Uh, the, the facet joint um, is where movement occurs. So the facet joint, I'm not going to go up into the neck. I'm going to describe the facet more in the uh, lower spine because it's a little bit easier to see. But where the bones of the spine meet, that is a facet joint. So looking in this area, that is our facet. So that facet can open. Um, or it can actually close down, uh, which will create either flexion movements, forward bending movements, or backward motions, or rotations. So those are our facet joints. Now with cervicogenic headaches, uh, it has been shown that the first two facet joints are where the problems occur. So if you're looking at the joint between the first neck bone and the second neck bone, as well as the second and the third. They've done studies where they've actually injected those joints with saline, uh, and it's actually mimicked that presentation of a cervicogenic headache. So why does someone get a head pain from a neck issue? It's called the convergence series. So if we con convergence theory. So if we look at our little our little guy here, we've got a couple of nerves that'll converge into what's called the trigeminal cervical nucleus or the TCN. So we've got our first three neck bones that each have a nerve root out of it. So these are the nerve roots coming out of the first three neck bones. Those then come up into the TCN. We then also have the trigeminal nerve, uh, which basically supplies uh, sensation within the face. That nerve also comes down into the TCN. So when the neck joint is stimulated, 
That stimulation goes up through the brain stem into the brain. It's processed in the brain. It comes back down. And what should happen is it should then come back down into the neck and we should feel it in the neck. However, what will happen sometimes is it will come up into the brain. It will come back down into this area. And then it will, in essence, go along the wrong, the wrong train track and it will come back up into the head and you'll have problems in the head. So neck problems can create head pain. And we treat that through spinal manipulation. We treat that through suboccipital release. We treat that through manual-based therapy. There have been great studies that have shown uh, the significant improvements in headache with spinal manipulative therapy. One study in 2002 uh, shows that 76% of patients had a greater than 50% recovery just with spinal manipulation alone. What was great about that study, too, is a year later they did a follow-up. 93 to 100 percent of those patients had a significant reduction in headache and a significant reduction in medication usage. Um, the people who did not get spinal manipulation in that particular study actually had a 33 percent increase uh, in medication, medication usage. So if you have headaches, uh, please give me a call. My number is 218-346-2464. I'd love to take a look at you. Thank you very much. Thank you for watching Wellness for Life, brought to you by Purim Physical Therapy, Sanford Health Clinic and Same Day Surgery Center, Amy Lundberg, Fitness for the Soul, Gottenborg Chiropractic Clinic, Pelican Drug Health Mart, Mojave Ottawa Community Action Partnership.